Hi guys, this is Easy as one, two, three, and today we're going to talk about carcinoid tumor and carcinoid syndrome. So, what is a carcinoid tumor? A carcinoid tumor is a neuroendocrine tumor, which has gone under malignant transformation. But the good thing is, this malignant transformation that has gone under through is low grade. And what is carcinoid syndrome? We're, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Okay. So this neuroendocrine tumor which is carcinoid. Uh, as you all know, in my gastroma lecture, I talked about the neuroendocrine tumor contains somatostatin receptors, the chromogranin uh, A positive, and I'm going to talk about it later on too, but that's very important to realize. So when you think of neuroendocrine tumor, you think of those two things because they're usually positive for all neuroendocrine tumors. So where is carcinoid tumor usually found? Well, before I tell you the exact location, it is the most common tumor of the small intestine. Okay, so this is the small intestine, and carcinoid tumor is the most common tumor in small intestine. Whereas location, carcinoid tumors are usually found in the appendix. Also, carcinoid tumor is also known to be found in the lungs, the bronchial carcinoid tumor. So it involves the lungs as well. So what happens usually is that carcinoid tumor produces serotonin. And serotonin, also known as 5-HT or 5-hydroxytyramine, is produced by tryptophan. Now, tryptophan also produces niacin. So this tumor is producing a lot of serotonin, which is using up all the tryptophan, and you're not able to make niacin. So what deficiency is this going to cause? Well, if you said pellagra, you're right. So now what happens is that this 5-HT goes to the liver and the liver makes this 5-HT into 5-hydroxy and dolicytic acid and this breakdown helps uh, serotonin not cause trouble in your body but now where the where the complications begin is that it might metastasize to the liver and these meds now cause problems. See, when I was studying this before, I always asked myself that if it, this is going to liver, why would it cause problems? Because it goes to liver anyways, and that's where the breakdown happens, so this should make it easier. But then I learned that this is a very sneaky tumor. So what it's doing in the liver is that through the hepatic vein, before it can be metabolized or, or broken down into 5 hydroxy acid, acetic acid, it uh, to the hepatic vein. I don't know why I wrote E here, but to the hepatic vein, it, it escapes through the inferior vena cava into the heart and uh, and the lung and other places, and uh, that's where the systemic problems come in. So this is what it does. Instead of being metabolized, when it goes to the liver to the hepatic vein, it escapes and it cannot be broken down to 5-hydroxy acidic acid and uh, this is where the carcinoid syndrome happens then. Now, when it starts producing its symptoms, now it's a carcinoid syndrome. As you know, syndrome is a collection of problems, right? So, in the, the breakdown was happening through monoamine oxidase, and this was what was happening. Now, let's talk about how is it affecting the heart and other tissues. So, when it goes to the heart, usually blood comes in through here, to the <clears throat> to, to the right heart to the right atrium and then goes to the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then from the right ventricle it goes to the pulmonic valve into the lung and so on and so on. But what is happening is that it causes increased collagen deposition. Because of this, your pulmonary your this is what a normal tricuspid valve looks like, right? It's pretty open. But this is what it does, it makes it even more open. Because of that, blood regurgitates back. And then it does the opposite in the pulmonary valve. It causes pulmonary stenosis. How I remember that is by the mnemonic tips. So tricuspid insufficiency, pulmonary stenosis. So pulmonary valve stenosis, which is going to call pooling of the blood back into the right side of the heart. And that's going to cause your right side to go into hypertrophy. Now, the interesting part is that it does not affect the left side of the heart because the lung does have monoamine oxidase, which I talked before, is where the conversion happens, right? 
An interesting finding you'll find is that you'll have a hollow systolic murmur. So the examiners, they're very tricky. So instead of telling you directly the heart problem, they might say, oh, the person is having a hollow systolic murmur. Now, what does that mean? Hollow systolic murmur is a feature of tricuspid insufficiency. Now, let's talk about a little bit of heart. Usually, the S1 to S2 is systolic and S2 to S1 is diastolic. So this murmur will be continuous murmur found in S1 to S2 as you can see right here. The systemic symptoms are flushing, wheezing, which is because of increased histamine release. Histamine, as you know, causes beta dilation in the arterioles, which will cause the flushing symptoms. And histamine will cause bronchoconstriction in the lung, which causes wheezing. And the serotonin causes diarrhea and fibrosis. Looking on histopatho, you'll find that these small cells, this is a collection of small cells, which is the characteristic of neuroendocrine tumors. The nest of carcinoma tumor have a typical endocrine appearance with small round cells having small round nuclei. This is a gross specimen of a small intestine, and this thing that is occupying is a carcinoid tumor. Diagnosis is made by chromogranin positive, which I talked about. The neuroendocrine tumors have granules, which are chromogranin positive, and a somatostatin Syntography in which you give a somatostatin, uh, radioactive somatostatin, and then it helps you locate where the carcinoid tumor is or if it has metastasized or not. Treatment is octreotide, which is somatostatin analog, surgical resection, and if it's gone to the liver, you do chemotherapy. One thing I did forget to mention, guys, is that it does cause pellagra. And before I go, I want to talk about the three Ds of pellagra, which will be caused because of niacin deficiency. The three Ds are diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis. So, neurological symptoms, skin symptoms, and dermatitis. Sorry guys, my spelling is really bad. <laughs> Being a doctor, the only good thing is you can write really fast so people don't have to read it. Um, and if these three are not corrected fast enough, the patient dies. And that's it guys, that's it with carcinoid tumor syndrome.